my name is Ty Danae Bradley. I'm a research mathematician at Sandbox AQ, and I am very happy to be here today with James Howe, part of our quantum security group at Sandbox AQ, and also Sanjay Deshpande, um, a former resident here at the company. Um, and we are here to talk about an idea in post-quantum cryptography that you all have been working on and have been developing. Really excited to hear more about that. So let's just dive right in. Um, James, can you tell us a little bit about this idea? You both have been collaborating on sort of its origin story and where it's going. Yeah, great. Thanks for having us. Um, yeah, so this idea, this uh, publication that we've just done is a hardware hardware realization of a, uh, um, a signature scheme that uh, we designed uh, at Sandbox AQ last year with uh, in collaboration with some other um, researchers around the world that has been um, submitted to NIST as part of their post-quantum standardization effort. That's great, that's great. There's a lot there to dive into, which is um, which is good. We have time to kind of get into some of those details. Maybe just for some, some context, Sanjay, could you tell us a little bit more, what is this NIST PQC competition um, that your project is a part of? So, um, yeah, I, I mean, as famously known, NIST stands for uh, National Institute of uh, Standards and Technology. And uh, so uh, what they are currently doing is uh, organizing a, a competition for post-quantum cryptography there, where uh, the aim is to, to standardize uh, these uh, PQC candidates. Um, so they take in submissions uh, of various candidates from all around the world and then it undergoes a multi-round evaluation process. Um, the the evaluation here uh, basically happens on like uh, different uh, metrics, based, uh, like primarily being uh, security. And then there is um, other metrics being like implementation efficiency, uh, like soft, on software and hardware. And then uh, cost, like uh, how, how big are the key sizes, how big are the signature sizes and, and, and so on. And then uh, finally, uh, they would select uh, a few candidates, which they would standardize eventually. So that's the, the whole idea behind um, this, this PQC competition. Okay, great. And can you, can you tell us a little bit more about just what PQC is? I know you mentioned what it stands for, but kind of the need for that. Um, sure. So, um, so as, as we all know that in the, in the quantum, uh, the research in the, the quantum computing field has been... Uh, uh, ha has been going great in, in these last few years. So uh, having uh, a noise-free large quantum computer could be a threat to the existing cryptographic standards, uh, especially the, the public key cryptography um, that we use in our day-to-day uh, -day payment systems and, and, and banking systems and, and etc. So um, so there is a need f for us to to replace these algorithms um, with the algorithms which are uh, safe, even with uh, like which which are quantum safe, basically. So so yeah, that's the the whole idea behind this uh, post quantum cryptography competition. Well, excellent, excellent. And so James, you mentioned that you all have submitted a hardware implementation of a signature scheme. Um, let's talk about some of those those ideas sort of separately. First, can you just explain to us what a digital signature is and what a signature scheme is? So a digital signature is a way to stamp your authenticity of uh, an electronic item. Um, and the digital signature scheme is the algorithm that we, how we do that. So it's a list of um, instructions on a computer and this is how we generate um, from an input. So an input might be a message and the output is the signature. So you have a message and a signature pair and that way you can then um, use what's called a verification um, algorithm. So those go hand in hand. So signature schemes have a way to generate keys. They have a way to generate a signature and then they have a way to verify, verify the, a message and a signature pair together. So, so James, you explained to us uh, the idea behind a digital signature and kind of what a scheme is, how it's used to generate that signature. But if I understand correctly, you all have been working on a post-quantum version of that. So can you just, we, we heard a little bit about this already, but can you kind of reiterate just the need for post-quantum signature schemes? 
Yeah, sure. So as Sanjay mentioned, the developments are always improving with quantum computers. And at a certain point, they will become practical and they will be able to take advantage of the the classical uh, standards that we have today for cryptography. So we need to replace standards for encryption as well as um, signature schemes. And this is effectively why NIST uh, began the competition for um, coming up with post-quantum standards for these uh, paradigms. And uh, they came up with standards. So we have standards now called Kyber for uh, key encapsulation mechanisms. And we have three signature schemes called uh, Dilithium, Falcon, and Sphinx Plus. They then opened up another call for signature schemes, which uh, Sandbox were a part of. Um, we designed a signature scheme called SD in the head or syndrome decoding in the head with a consortium of other researchers uh, in academia and industry. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this syndrome decoding in the head, because um, this is what y'all have been working on. Can you help us understand what that scheme is just from a very high level? And then also those words individually. I mean, what does this mean? Yeah, so syndrome, syndrome decoding is a well-known problem in code-based cryptography. It's been around for decades. Um, it's a strong conservative uh, hardness problem, which is... So you have a solution to a syndrome decoding instance, which is effectively a um, an equation. Uh, you need to find the the two inputs to that equation, giving given the the output of that equation, and this is known to be computationally hard for quantum computers and classical computers. So we've built a signature scheme around this paradigm, this hardness problem, and then. We've used we've also used um, concepts from MPC and the uh, MPC, which is which stands for multi-party computation, and more specifically, the paradigm is called uh, multi-party computation in the head or MPC in the head, which is why we have named it SD in the head or syndrome decoding in the head. So thanks, James, for for that explanation. Can you just tell us a little bit now? about how SD in the head is different from the digital schemes that are currently in use. Yeah. Um, so it, the fact that it is different is important because this was almost a prerequisite for this additional round of um, signature scheme candidates. So the ones, the standards that were chosen were based on lattices. So lattice-based assumptions and hardness problems, as well as those based on hash functions. So the candidates were meant to be different to add diversity into the candidates that we will be having in the coming years. So we based ours on code based assumptions, as well as using this MPC uh, in the head paradigm. Um, and we wanted it to be conservative. So we could have used different assumptions maybe for the code based part of it. But we decided to pick something that's conservative. The signature size is fairly good. It compares uh, relatively well with um, Sphinx, which was the hash-based uh, candidate. It has fairly good runtime and it has small keys. So that was the profile we decided to go with in the in the final version of the candidate. And that's yeah, that's how it's different from the other standards that were chosen by NIST. Just so that I understand. Key sizes being small is a good thing. Can you just kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Why is that kind of a desirable property? So when you get into actually using these schemes, like a common example is in TLS. So uh, you're logging onto a website and in order to start that transaction with, uh, with a server or a website, you have to send keys. So I have to send you a key. And the smaller it is, the faster it is, um, the less bandwidth it takes on the internet. So therefore you get a lot of benefits that way. Um, and you usually send in TLS, you usually send your, um, your public key and the signature. So those come in a pair often and a metric that's used quite often in the literature is the public key plus signature size as a, as a pair, um, rather than taking them separately, for example. 
So Sanjay, if I understand correctly, you all have been working on a hardware implementation of this particular signature scheme. So before we go into the specifics of what that looks like, can you kind of just explain a little bit from a, from a bird's eye view, what is a hardware implementation of a scheme? So um, a hardware realization or uh, an implementation of um, any algorithm is basically uh, implementation of this specific algorithm in a hardware descriptive language. And the, the reason we use the hardware descriptive language is to target either uh, uh, FPGAs, which are field programmable gate arrays, or um, ASICs, which are apl uh, application specific uh, integrated circuits. Uh, for our research work, we used uh, the FPGAs. Um, and as the name stands, uh, the field programmable gate arrays, the FPGAs consists of uh, uh, a matrix of uh, uh, configurable logic blocks with interconnects uh, in between them. These uh, logic blocks could be run in, in parallel. So basically when you design uh, hardware blocks uh, for FPGAs, you could run multiple hardware blocks in parallel. Um, to to uh, put it simply, the the these configurable logic blocks are very. Uh, you could compare them to to Legos. So uh, so basically, the more Lego um, uh, Lego pieces that you use, the bigger the design is, and, and and vice versa. So when it comes to the applications of where we would use the hardware design, and um, so that gives us some flexibility in in designing the the hardware. Basically. We could use a lesser number of configurable logic blocks, which is less Legos for low area designs. So for example, if we want to go for a smart card as an application, uh, it's a small application and you, uh, the, the resources that uh, we have there is, is not a lot. So we need to be mindful of that and design uh, a lightweight uh, design uh, in terms of the, the architecture that we choose. On the other hand, if uh, the application uh, that we are targeting our hardware design is, is going to go uh, in, a, in a server, then um, we have uh, more resources there. And the, the, the main idea there is to get a, a, as much performance as we can. So we could use uh, uh, more configurable logic blocks uh, to get more parallelism. Um, so more uh, Lego blocks, basically. So, so yeah, that's the, the idea behind the hardware realization. Yeah, that's great. So it's almost like implementing it on hardware gives you better insight into the scheme itself or into the software, um, if I'm understanding correctly. That's amazing. So um, maybe James or Sanjay, whoever wants to take this question as we kind of wrap up, can you kind of tell us where you all are now in the state of things, kind of like its current status and kind of what you're going to look forward to doing in the future? So uh, this work that we did is the, the first implementation of uh, the syndrome decoding in the head algorithm. So uh, the, the considerations that we took into to account was to, to keep it uh, lightweight, uh, low in the area, and, and, uh, uh, and balance the design for a, something called a time area product. And we, we submitted this work uh, to a conference called Workshop on uh, Cryptographic Hardware and Embedded Systems, or CHESS uh, for short. And it got accepted, so we'll be presenting this paper uh, in in September. Um, additionally, we also submitted this to to NIST's uh, PQC conference, uh, the uh, fifth NIST's PQC conference, uh, which is going to to happen in this April, and the paper was accepted uh, there as well. So we'll be presenting that uh, in April uh, in, in the next month there. So sort of of where we go from here uh, is basically. Um, since, since I mentioned this is like a vanilla implementation with like only few of the, the considerations in terms of hardware uh, properties. So there are uh, many directions to take in, in terms of hardware research. So there could be a more performant hardware design where you, when you increase the size of the hardware to get more uh, performance. That could be one of the research directions. Then uh, there are um, other things like adding uh, security uh, for for side channel safety of the implementation itself. So um, there are like uh, power side channel uh, safeties and, and, and um, uh, other uh, optimizations that, that could be done. Uh, on a bigger picture, where we go from uh, for, for uh, in terms of the NIST PQC competition itself is that uh, the timeline from the NIST's end is, is not announced yet. Uh, we are still awaiting uh, on um, 
uh, what happens after like 40 candidates are submitted to the competition. So we await on which co candidates are going to progress to the next round and, and um, uh, what would be the improvements in individual candidates. That's great. This sounds really exciting. I mean, congratulations on the acceptance of your work um, in, in both in both venues. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of exciting research to do going forward. And I can't wait to see what you both do next. So thank you so much for your time today um, and, and explaining to us a little bit about what y'all are working on. It's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. us. Yeah.